We have been traveling for more than one and a half years in a Land Rover Defender. We have been stuck in many places. Sand, snow, mud. But we were never so close to lose our car, like in this situation. We were absolutely stoked to start traveling around South America, especially as family is joining us for the adventure. Carsten, the brother from Kai, is here. Hola. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Let's go. I'm going to the back. I guess it's true what they say, you know, about the calm before the storm. In retrospect, it was clear that we were enjoying a very peaceful moment in Uruguay. Not only the weather allow us to have a couple of beautiful rest days for Carsten to get rid of the jet lag, but also for doing some maintenance on the landing. Our last destination in Uruguay was Colonia del Sacramento. We enjoyed the spring vibes and walking the narrow streets. From here, we headed towards the border to Argentina. Second thing to do, put water. I like when the petrol stations have water. It's just super convenient. Nothing like in Africa, where we had to search for the whole day for water. Not long after the crossing, we're starting to get a hint of what was coming our way. The region of Corrientes in Argentina was getting massive storms non-stop, flooding most of the landscape and increasing the level of the rivers.
Japeyu, the peaceful town where we were supposed to learn about the Warani culture, turned out to be the epicenter of the disaster. We took back roads going north, parallel to the Uruguay River. Unaware of the drama that was about to unfold in less than five minutes. This place is key to the whole story, keeping in mind. And also the fact that we were in an area infested with mosquitoes. Ich habe die Tür aufgemacht, es kam eine Wolke an Moskitos. No. They're fighting against mosquitos. You just open the window for a second. <laughs> Maybe next to the river is not a good idea. This was the time to be smart and walk the path. But overconfidence took over, as well as being too lazy to walk it in a mosquito-infested scenario. I decided to drive in to a river crossing that didn't look that bad and I missed the path and the car is really really bad sinking into a ditch. We are trying to find somebody to help us. Um, we attached the car with a rope but um, it's slowly sinking. Uh, it's a pretty pretty desperate situation. Um, there are some trees over there, so um, I might think to attach the car uh, even better. So hopefully we can get help soon and pull it out as soon as possible. While Kai and Carlson were looking for trees to fix the car, I already had taken the most valuable out of the landy, and I was running like a maniac looking for help. The people of the house next to us didn't bother at all, even if I was wet until my waist, barefoot, begging for help. But we were lucky that the guys from the prefectura took over and helped us the whole time. <laughs> We need to go there and tell them that they need to go to the other side. Can you come with me? Yeah. Need to, uh, the pencil. Yes. You can see it. Also, na gut, dann hast du sie halt später nicht mehr, wenn du sie anlässt. Mm. 
Dígale, señora, que le dijo Tony. ¿Eh? Dígale que de ese lado no pueden sacar porque sí, va sí. a volcar. Claro, claro. It was thanks to them that we were able to get in contact with the police and the fire brigade from Yapeyú. So the situation is the fire brigade just came uh, with a 4x4 to check the situation. They saw how bad it is. They came from the wrong side. Um, so they are now trying to contact a tractor to come and help us. Because the car is sinking. So the problem it is that there is a broken bridge here that of course we didn't see and we are outside the bridge. So the car is literally going out of the path. And the only way to do it, to rescue it at the moment, is to do it from the back. And the only way you can do it is with a tractor or so. Right now we secure the car in three points so it doesn't go more deeper, but it's still sinking to the side and they say there's a storm coming and the fire brigade of course is going to take care of us and not the car and it could be that it gets even worse It's really late. I don't have a clue what time it is. I don't have my phone with me. Um, already dark for several hours, waiting for a tractor. Um, Kasten went with the guy from the Prefectura to the house because we want to avoid that all the things that we have, um, including all the electronics, to get wet because it's going to start raining soon. So that's it for the moment. And Kai is taking extra things from the car, top of the car. Um, from the top and the sandboards and some other things while we are waiting. Going down for the measures that we do help something. Sorry again? Either the water is going down or what we do helps. Because it's not that deep. The water level is not as high. I can see like two centimeters less. I think it's all, all, only the water level is going down. I think. Yeah, Kasten is coming back as well.
guess what? The car started. <laughs> like I have like two percent battery. Most probably will die, but yeah, the car started after. Yeah, it was like getting rid of liters and liters of water from inside, and the batteries were wet. But Kai checked; the batteries had power, and the air filter was dry. The engine was dry. So now we are just driving away, like another five cars that came and the tractor. It's amazing they're helping us a lot. We're putting everything back together. We'll try to go to a camping and the next day we need to drive absolutely everything. Regarding the footage, I asked the guys that were there that they were recording with the phone because I lost the battery. And they can send me that. Kasten is just shocked at what happened. <laughs> Like less than ten days with us. <laughs> we pick it up everything, put it inside the car and we are going to a camping. We are at the camping. Actually there's nobody here. But we are just going to stay here until tomorrow. And talk to the owners I guess tomorrow. It's municipal, so it's from the city. Yeah. Talk. Yeah, okay. The city centers of this town. Connected the power again. Everything, it's okay. We are getting really, really tired. Like now is when we are feeling like the whole thing, how it, it destroyed us so much. After eating and having a tea now, we are going down so fast. Mm -hmm. We will go to sleep and deal with it tomorrow. Good morning, we changed places and now we are somewhere dry so we can dry most of our stuff, clean the car and so on. Everything is dry but the weather is not cooperating. You can see here um, the batteries. It's insane to think that they were for hours submerged completely in water. You can see how they are. And still they worked, so we are just testing these batteries like crazy. First of all they're in the shipping and now submerge them in water. And see how everything was completely like everything here was completely submerged in water. Everything. Speakers, everything. You can see the line, I mean you can see the line very clearly. How all this was in water, and you can see the compartment of the batteries just full of of mud. Um, this is going to be the first job: clean all this from mud. I think there was no water coming into the heater, external heater, diesel heater. Um, that would have been really bad because breaking the diesel heater at this point. <laughs> that we are going to go to colder climate um, it will be really bad so it looks that looks okay yeah what it really broke was um, here uh, the shunt it's IP67 so you can have a bit of water but you cannot submerge it
this is the tire that was completely buried in the mud. We already checked yesterday before starting the, the engine, but the filter, the air filter is completely dry. That's the breather of one of the axles, that's transmission and transfer case as far as I know. And they were out of the water so they should be fine. So no changing oil on the axles? I'm not sure about that. The generator was not in the water so it should be fine as well. You can see here the line of the water. You can see it also here. Like this, a clear line. Can you see? Very well. Second time in a couple of months that we removed the whole furniture. That's the water level. The camping is completely underwater there. The river is like super high. Doesn't look too bad, but yesterday all this was full of water, so... Cleaning time! After checking everything yesterday, it looks like the only thing that broke is the shunt and maybe the temperature sensor. Well, and the pants from Kai that he didn't even realize that he was walking around with <laughs> completely broken trousers. Nearly.
gefällig, ja. Back for another try. Echt? Da ist die Flasche, ist das. Yeah, we found the bottle. This is where the tractor actually came. And the water went down a lot. All this was underwater. And now it's not. The broken bridge there. Like we went a bit left from that, like we slide when we were going up, and then we end up on the left side. And that was the whole story. We consider ourselves extremely fortunate. If we had sunk the car on the right side, we would have submerged the ECU and our trip would have ended up pretty quickly. But more important than anything, without the help of the people of Yapeyu, we would not be able to rescue our car. We at least learned our lesson. I hope you do as well from our video. Always, absolutely, always walk sketchy rivers. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode. So we got stuck in sand, we got stuck in mud, we got stuck in water and we got stuck in snow. We have them all. Um, we had an accident. Um, scammed that's the statistics 